Hello, lovely dance people, and welcome to David's uh, Dance Podcast. I'm your host, David Evans. Uh, we're so happy to have on the podcast today an amazing artist and creative. Um, he's a dancer, a teacher, an actor working in film, a uh, performer, it's a very multi talented individual. We're so pleased to welcome to the podcast Jeremiah Olusola. Jeremiah, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to be the background noise. Like, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. <laughs> it is so good to have you on the podcast, you know, and before we kicked off, like we already had like a bit of a catch up and it's been so nice over like over crazy lockdown times to be able to Yep. see other dan dancers because so much of like one of the things i love 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 about the dance like industry and dance scene is just like other dancers and just like mm -hmm. jamming and hanging out with other like like-minded people who just like Absolutely. got into this because they just like to jam they like to boogie um and so so for me this has been like such a lifeline to just like spend a little bit of time with uh people again it's been so good oh uh, this is this is absolutely a, a great idea david well done for bringing this up because this is what we need we actually need to have conversations we actually need to be uh, mostly around you know our peers some people that think like us basically be around artists for us to have certain conversations for for us to understand certain situations so yeah i'm i'm really really proud of you for being oh, thanks, this man. Thank yeah, Thank thanks so much. Like, I would, to be honest, I wouldn't have necessarily thought to have started this if like lockdown didn't happen. And um, <laughs> uh, talent in you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it is, it is that kind of thing. Actually, you're seeing a lot of this. I think in the dance industry, maybe a little bit more from the. the I think you saw it from the underground scene first, mm. and then mm -hmm. some of the big companies kind of caught up, where there was a really quick shift to kind of a lot of digital entrepreneurianism, mm -hmm. entrepreneurism um, in dance where suddenly people were coming out like, okay, I can't perform. All right, well, I'm gonna make a dance film. Um, all right, I'm gonna do my classes, dance classes online. Um, uh, okay, I'm gonna do that podcast, do that blog, do that, you know, do that thing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, we're gonna do rehearsals online. And um, I saw it happen while all the big companies were sort of just furloughing and things were just pittering out there. There was like a good strong six months where I saw the underground scene as frustrating as it was that people weren't able to work in the old ways. I was, yeah. I was really proud of the ways in which people quickly adapted. And I really admire like one of the things I love about dancers in our industries just the, is the hustle. And I really do admire, especially this generation, the kind of like, if someone's not giving you an opportunity, like make your opportunity, you know? Absolutely. Just make Absolutely. it happen, you know? And we saw it like kind of that happen first with the more freelance scene. And then, and then now you're starting to see things where um, I'm seeing more uh, dance performances released, you know, things like streaming services like Marquee um, and different companies releasing their shows online and just realizing like, Oh, actually, this is a great way for people to stay in touch with the company. Um, yep. You know, Ron Bear has released their Ron Bear Home Studios with their like digital teaching platform and kind of hub. So, yeah, I think it's it's really changed the industry. Like, I, I think in kind of a positive way. I think like dance has. I, I think it's still you can't replace that experience of like live performance, but I think a, a lot of dance companies are getting more savvy to the importance of digital marketing and not being mm -hmm. too precious with material. Um, mm -hmm. I talk about comedians a lot cause like I'm a big comedy fan, but like <laughs> one of the things I think comedians have done really well, uh, like especially like LA comics and some New York comics and you're seeing more is just like not being precious about their material anymore. Like it used to be like doing like a hour long special was, was the goal. And now pretty much people like, well, you make your money on the show. You don't make your money on the content anymore. 
So for them, they're just like, all this content's just marketing. So I'm just gonna like get it out there as much mm-hmm. as I can. And I'm finally seeing dancers and creatives embrace that model. And I think it's fantastic because it's made, in many ways, it's made the arts more um, accessible. I don't think it replaces live interaction. I, I, think it, yeah. I, I think it actually markets it. Um, and it's mm. doing something that's really important in terms of just making it like I've seen more dance work in the last two months and like I would normally see in two years just because of how much <laughs> there is available to see online now and it's allowed yep. me to catch up on dance pieces that people have gone oh you need to see this piece by that company but if you don't go when that company is like touring that specific work you'll you'll miss it so for me it's been it's been good in that sense too um you know i think we're seeing that shift in a lot of industries and that's not to you know say that there hasn't been real hurt but i i do think the hustle and the entrepreneurialism i've seen has been really really positive oh we just lost you your video oh sorry hello yeah my back yeah yeah, yeah you're back you're back right. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so yeah i think i think it's really positive man um, should we start at the beginning? Like, let's start with your. We, we joked in in the uh, in in the in earlier about like uh, starting with the origin story, the the yes. story of. <laughs> but this this is oh. fun. This is I like this. Yeah, like yeah. This. Of what like what the, what spider bit it. you? <laughs> what music was playing when the spider bit you? Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, which you know close relative did you have to avenge <laughs> through your dance career um <laughs> there, was a fly, there was a fly that whispered to me like <laughs> i was like bzz, 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 what? <laughs> that's so much less cool fly man <laughs> <laughs> i was bit by a fly <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> fly man yeah he, he scares away the villains just as annoying buzz <laughs> and they're like <laughs> uh dude all right so origin story tell me like dance why did you get into dance what was your kind of what was first contact for you and yeah where did it all start wow that's a that's a question. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I, I, I it all started. <laughs> why does it sound like a documentary, a docu series? In the it beginning, all started <laughs> when I was a kid. No, actually, um, it started when I was uh, uh, 16, 17 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had the taste for it, but I wasn't sure if I was a if I was good enough to go mm-hmm. into it. So uh, I used to watch people dance. I used to watch like break dancers do their thing on the side of the road. And I, I'm always, you know, fascinated with the idea of people being able to like control their body and move in a certain way. Then uh, I went to university at the age of uh, 18. And obviously that's the age I when he was to university. Uh, I went at age. Of, I went at that age, and there was this talent show at our university. And at that time, I was studying engineering. By the way, oh uh, really? I didn't know this. <laughs> weird, weird. <laughs> so, I was, so I was studying engineering, and the main reason I did it is, you know, I come from an African background. You know, where my parents are doctor, lawyer, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> going to say, that's engineer. like top of the list of like African jobs of just like doctor, yep. engineer, <laughs> lawyer, like. Exactly. <laughs> and those so, are like the uh, only jobs that exist. <laughs> dance? What do you mean by that? You want to start stripping? What? Oh. I'm like, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I went to thingy. So I, there was this talent show where uh, people were coming out and just showing the talent. So I went out on that day. I don't know why I went out, but I, I, I started dancing. And may I say, I was horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. <laughs> There's still a video of that somewhere. And then someone came to me and go, oh my God, you're amazing. And I was like, 
oh, oh, thank you. Like, and then that that kind of like sparked that sparked an idea. Like, I, I wonder if I can. Hmm. Let's see. So uh, I started like just going around and watching people, watch the way they move, and I would like go back home, go on like let's say YouTube and watch like favorite dancers that I've admired, like someone like Brooke Milner. Brooke Milner, ah, oh, he's he's just he still dances, so he's like a he's a popper. He's like the you know he's in a crew called Play Crew. Mm-hmm. So I used to watch them. I used to watch some of their like their routines on like you know shows like hhi and the rest and i used to think oh my god this guy's an amazing these guys are sick so where's I where's would, this crew would, based the london based crew a london based crew okay yeah so i used to watch them and just you know being all of them then i would watch you know green scott talent where you see people like flawless diversity and the rest of them and you're like you know i you know what i reckon i can do that and also mm-hmm. because i actually see someone that looks like me on tv and i'm thinking yeah. you know what i relate to that i that's something i want to try to do mm-hmm. and I, then I i think i got the the taste for it i i got a taste for it at 16 but i started you know putting my energy towards dance at the age of 21 Really? Oh, yeah. So I, I left uni. I left uni. I did not finish. I did not finish university. Mm-hmm. I left. Uh, I didn't get my degree, my engineering degree, which right now I'm kind of like going, why didn't I just finish? I was one year away. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I, I left and I, I went, I moved to London in 2012 and absolutely decided I'm just going to give a go. I'm going to give a shot, 100% shot, and see what happens. So I went to uh, Alien and Amersmith College and studied um, performing arts, BTEC. And from there, I got the, the grades to get into a university, which was University of Rorantin. And right. the rest is history. Dude, I didn't know this about you. In, in my head, like, I had always thought you'd taken quite, like, a traditional like a route like you'd been dancing for a while and then like i knew you went to <laughs> roehampton i just thought you went straight into roehampton like i didn't know i didn't know you were like <laughs> older oh, I, black, black don't crack you know so it's just like <laughs> i yeah i didn't realize that you had like yeah like i guess well yeah similar story but i always really admire and we talk a bit on this podcast about like the older dancers and the value yeah. of being like an older dancer and like you can come into it later and like yes. and make it happen um and one of the great things about coming into it later is that it gives you like conviction um, because you can do other things and then realize no actually i want to do dance which is kind of mm-hmm. better than doing dance and then going oh actually i don't want to do this <laughs> um yeah dude that's yeah that's it was yeah it just Thinking about it, just like you said it now, thinking about it, it was actually, I feel like it's better for you to have that conviction before you pursue dance because yeah. it's not easy. It's not easy to stay, you know, to stay true to your artistry, let alone mm-hmm. to stay in the business or in the dance world. It's yeah. not easy. So you, you need that conviction to like, you know, give you an extra boost of confidence, like, I am right. I am sure this is what I want to do. Mm. So, and I think coming in, coming in in a later age, like you said, really does help. It really does help. Yeah, I think a lot of it's that <laughs> um, it's it is developing that passion and just falling mm. in love with the dance and Absolutely. whatever dance that is, and actually how it doesn't matter how far along you get in your career. Mm-hmm. falling in love with dance again and again is so important i mean yeah. it's like honestly it's like any other relationship you know even like you know your relationship with other like human beings that's about yep. learning to fall in love again and again mm. you know and and you do have to like rediscover that because i think like mental health wise for me like basically yeah, i find baseline dance pretty much always improves my mental health like 
when I dance, I'm happy. Like I feel good. It just releases those like feel good stuff. I feel so yeah. much more connected. I feel probably most myself mm. when I'm dancing. Um, and like, but like the dance industry, <laughs> dance career. <laughs> I was just about to say. I'm not, not so great at promoting like <laughs> my mental health, like in terms of like the strain, the expectations from others, but the expectations we horrendous expectations we put on ourselves, you know. Yep. And especially like, you know, myself. I'm quite like self-critical and like I think that's quite common in dancers and especially when you do like more intense training, like or you're being mm-hmm. more critical as well as, you know, dealing with things around like the issues like I never had like any kind of body issues while I was training or or, yeah. or learning uh which was really nice and I felt really comfortable when I was at Laban um about my body and when I was mm. dancing in other places like I only started to become insecure about my body when I like when I graduated and I started working especially doing more commercial stuff yeah. um because suddenly you're like you're realizing that your body image does matter more and mm-hmm. can affect whether or not you get a job. You get the um, job. You get the job. And so that was a that was a point at which like I started to deal with those issues. And like none of that came from my training. And I've worked with some lovely choreographers, but there are still things around the industry that just by their <laughs> Just by their their nature, um, you know, it is your body on stage. And if, you know, you're part of an image of a, a brand or a commercial or whatever, then you do, you know, start to realize that, oh, this, this, if I'm not in tip top shape, like yeah. this, this might affect whether, and not even like, by the way, like not fat, like just, just not shred city, basically, <laughs> like, <laughs> just not like, just not like super fit, like at your top <laughs> top level um yeah. and so it, it it can invite these sort of negative things but i always find like i always have to just come back to dance and just mm. like just do the dance and like find my enjoyment for it again and go like oh yeah this this is why i'm doing it and actually i don't need to worry about that other like rubbish because all that stuff is circumstantial and the only it's- reason why we put up with that stuff is to facilitate doing this thing that uh, we love on you know dancing on a more regular basis so Absolutely. it's yeah it's an interesting push and pull like how have, how have you found that over the years like I think everybody's relationship between mental health and dance is different like has that been and and it is like quite a specific relationship how has that been how have you Ooh. navigated that over the years do you think I know that's uh, quite a broad question but oh my gosh so like um Dance and me- mental health is, is just something we don't talk about enough. We do talk about it, but yeah. we don't talk about it enough in the dance industry at all. Because, like, as much as I love, I, 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 can't sit, I can't sit here and start telling you about how much I love dancing because we're going we're gonna to be here all day. Mm. I absolutely love the art. But when it comes to the dance industry, that's where the problem lies for me. Because I have seen things that, or I've been through things that's affected my mental health in the dance industry. Mm. The other day I took a video of myself, I was in the house. I was like, I was just, I was basically just freestyling with a motif in my head. Like, how about you try this? How about you do this and see how it goes? And I realized I enjoyed my dance because I wasn't trying to impress anyone. Mm. I wasn't trying to like, there wasn't someone I was trying to impress. Normally I would, if I'm in that mode of freestyling, I would freestyle and put it on Instagram and I'll be waiting for someone to give me a feedback. Mm. Like I would send it to people I like, I admire in the, like in the industry and go, okay, what do I need to work on? What do I need to do? Mm. What do I need to do? Like, do I need to do this? So, because at the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I, I'm always thinking, I'm missing something. I yeah. am missing something. Because 
I'll be on Instagram five seconds later and then I'll see someone do something amazing. I'll be like, that's what I'm missing. I'm missing that amazing factor. Mm. But then that day when I was dancing and I just, I realized I'm creating something. I'm creating my own story. Why do I need to conform? Mm. Why do I need to like, to bend my story to fit someone's narrative of interesting? Yeah. And this is what this is what I've been struggling with. It's come to a point where I, I just don't understand why I was dancing. It got it got to a point where I just didn't understand. Are we talking about like the I would I I didn't have a problem with the body image, but when it comes to like my eyes, my eyes is always a problem. Mm. My eyes is always I'm five six. I wish I was six two sometimes, but you know. My eyes has always been a problem from day one. People don't realize actually just like how most dancers are short. <laughs> like <laughs> right? how, right? how like it's all it's all camera camera tricks. Like it really, really is because like actually you get into the industry and like look around and actually the vast majority of dancers are are actually short. Like, short. Yeah. <laughs> but when it comes to like guys in the industry you have to yeah. be like from five eight upwards or yeah. from five seven and i just i like it, it was a problem for me at some point until i realized like it doesn't matter it, it yeah. really i just put myself in the mindset of even if this audition says you have to be six two to be in this audition i will turn up I'm going to turn up because I want to prove something to you. Like, okay, I'll be here. If you, if you tell me to leave, obviously I'll have to leave. But if you allow me to audition, I promise you, I will make sure yeah. you never forget the, five, the yeah. five, six guy. I just love that confidence. Just, just handing in your audition form. Just being like, sorry, you had a typo here. It said six, two. I changed it for you. It's a five, two. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It happens all the time. I changed it for you. We'll let we'll let it slide. We'll let it slide. <laughs> like, I just, dude, I love that confidence. I would never be that confident to just be just yeah. <laughs> it's not even the confidence. It's the it's the fact where I've just gone. You know, I, I've I've been so like I've gone into my own head where I'm thinking yeah. my body isn't isn't that I I just. I've created this image of my body being what is not. Mm. Like some even t yesterday, I did I did it yesterday as well. I looked into the mirror and I'm like, oh my god, I've lost like I've gained a lot of weight. And then I said to myself, like, why do I care mm. that much? Like I've gained weight. And then <laughs> you can hear <laughs> like people are like, what are you talking about? Like you're not even. You're not even close to gaining weight. Like, <laughs> then I'm like, no, I know. I know what my yeah. body needs to look like. And then it just dawned on me, like, it's just all in my head. Yeah. Like, it's all in my head. I've, like, the industry have made me think that my body is not enough, that my body is, I, but I'm not going to blame everything on the industry. I'm just, you know, mm. I, I'm. It, it's come to a point where I've allowed the industry to get into my my men the way my mind works where the industry is now playing a part in the way i think about myself and my artistry yeah because like for example <laughs> nowadays we have like like you said it's nice that you know we are you know tech savvy as dancers yeah. but at the same time this is also the problem because a lot of dancers would rather you know they would rather take the shortcut mm. which you as a you know as a as an artist or I, I like to call myself a purist which I'm not but you know my ideology think it's a purist but it's not uh but <laughs> You want to you want to go through. You want people to go understand the process before they actually do the dance. But nowadays, people are just like people just take the shortcut. You see, like a, a mom once told me because I, I teach I teach dance, mm -hmm. and a mom once told me that uh, um, 
my my kid is not going to be going to your class this week. And I was like, oh, why is that? And, and then she was like, <laughs> and she was like, um, she wouldn't be needing that because she has TikTok now. And I was like, mm. I was like, what? <laughs> 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 Sorry, that, that that still makes me laugh. Wow. So, <laughs> she is TikTok now. Yep. And you're just like, and you're just like, ah, cool. Great. <laughs> it does depend like what you want dance for, because like the the thing is right, you can go to YouTube to learn dance moves, and YouTube is good for learning dance moves it's absolutely more often than not not really good for learning foundation i think it's so hard to learn foundation on youtube and to actually and you can't get feedback so you don't really know how Mm -hmm. to improve it's Mm kind of great for receiving information but it's not really good for refining that information yes and it's really helpful to have a teacher there who can help guide you and also help guide you with what to learn because often people Mm -hmm. go like you know, think of breaking, like people go, oh, I want to learn how to windmill, type in windmill tutorial. <laughs> and like, they're jumping straight to windmills. And they like, can't do a baby freeze, which is you need to do a windmill, can't do a back end, which you need to do a windmill. But if you like, were with a teacher, they would be able to like break that down, you know, actually help you accelerate your own learning process, mm-hmm. as well as the fact that like, fundamentally dance is like, a communal activity you know yep. and it's or and it's always been something that people have like generally done together you know mm. it's the way in which you know the tribe celebrates mourns uh comes together finds a lot you know finds a life partner like dances at the center of so much of socialization and so much of society traditionally and yeah um you know and taking away that communal aspect that comes with a dance class i think is difficult and so it's like yeah okay yeah you can learn some of the stuff on tiktok but i I really think it's like it's like a sixth you know you can learn a sixth of like what dance is of that pie you can get from like TikTok and YouTube and you can get it really good from that. Um, but it's, it's really hard to become a well-rounded dancer without, um, either a teacher or peers around you to help you curate and craft your own dance. You know, sometimes people don't always have the luxury of having uh, great teachers around them. Um, yeah. In those cases, I'm I'm just like find a friend and work on your dance together because you can Absolutely. learn so much with working with a peer and with someone else. But I I, th- I think you know what that child unfortunately is missing is like like sure okay they want to go on TikTok so they can impress their friends like but their friends are at the dance class <laughs> like and when it isn't so much better to actually go to the dance class and see your friends and share your dance there like. But it's um, just that just, it just goes back to how oh, she's gonna be. I I feel like I hope not. Touch wood, she's not. But I feel like she's gonna be affected by that because now she's thinking a dance. Because if you learn a dance off TikTok, your mindset will be, I have to impress every time. Yeah, I have to impress people every time. So which means our artistry is gonna be taking a step back every time she creates because she's going to think oh it's not enough it's not good enough it's not good enough yeah but if she if she you know as a teacher to get um let her understand you see this is one mm. thing that we are missing in the uk or i feel i feel the uk industry is missing because back you know bef- uh before let's say 10 years, oh, I, I, was in, I was in the industry 10 years ago, but I can, I watch the industry from afar 10 years ago. I watched the industry in 2010. I used to watch the way, like, the, the dancers, or the top dancers, the, the OGs, if I may say, the OGs would, like, help 
the younger generation. Mm. You remember there was there used to be a place called Trocadero in you know uh, the city center in um, what's that place called Piccadilly? Trocadero used to be a Piccadilly where you would see like an OG dancer or someone who has been in the industry for so long freestyling with a new a newbie who has just started dancing. Mm. They they used to be that communal you know that community where everyone would just be in that space and learning of each other, seeing how, you know, moves are made, seeing now like ideas are created. And from there you expand your ideology of dance. But I feel like since, uh, since that space wasn't there any longer, that disappeared. Yeah. Now everyone, everyone in the UK is out for themselves now which I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Dance is mm. like a, it's a very, you know, very competitive industry. Mm. But back then it was, but there, there were still people helping. It was easy to see how, like, it was easy to see the difference between creating, being a dancer and being an artist back then. Because mm. yeah. even now there, you will see people would take classes that would rather, you know, give them clout on Instagram than take classes that would rather improve, you know, the way they dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like, example, like do the do the class because they know that choreo and that choreographer is followed a lot on Instagram and yeah. they're gonna get the shot. And like, okay, that's that's fine. That is that is one thing to go and, and do. And like, as that's a fair enough, like marketing strategy and it works well, Absolutely. you know, but also like, it's not great if that's the only thing you're doing. Cause then like, you're not going to improve because if you can do a dance a hundred percent by the end of class, it was probably not a hard enough class for you. There you go. It wasn't because, challenging because you didn't have anything to come away to work on. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think you bring up a lot of important things about the importance of creating like a really good teaching environment that's actually yeah. focused on helping helping people improve, but also mm -hmm. helping people improve in a way that's safe. You know, like if you just post yourself on YouTube or Instagram, like any old troll can just like go there and just shut you down. And just there you go. Whereas like if you're a teacher, you can facilitate like a a good positive environment. That doesn't always happen, you know, like we've all had teachers who are just like oh. <laughs> rubbish and just knock you down and you're and you're like, wow, I wish I wish uh, like the internet trolls were teaching me like these things are so bad. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But um <laughs> but I think facilitating that environment is like a really great advantage, you know. And it's also the importance of free space, to be honest. Space is so expensive. And I, I really believe like you don't need to host a lot of things, like create programs and events. Like this is what I'm saying to like artist institutions. Like I've talked to the church about this as well. I'm like, guys, if you want to have dance happen, you don't need to like have dance classes, have dance events, like do all this stuff, promote it, market it. You don't just make a space. And then whoever yeah. wants to do it will do it. will do it. And yeah. you got to make that space like like culturally, mm. uh, people need social permission. So if you just say, "Hey, come and use this space," <laughs> like literally just saying it, like invites people to go and do it. It almost gives people social permission, and just making spaces like physically available, you'll be amazed. And what people come up with if you just give them a little bit of space to express absolutely. themselves like they'll just absolutely just take off and uh, i agree that that's sort of you know missing in 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 some places um there the importance of having accessible space in, in the arts mm -hmm. especially for for dancers because we train so much um that <laughs> that we need that we that if we were to always pay for our space, it would just be too costly. Like you know, it, it is like the matter. If I can't, I can't, ex I can't start to explain the amount of money I've spent on just you know 
dance spaces, if they, mm. even classes or just just dance, basically, the amount of money I've spent on it, it's ridiculous. But it's just, but we do it because we know why we're doing it, We because we love it. But at the same time, if I'm going to pay my money to someone, I need to make sure this person is impacting my dance in a positive light. Like, I'll, like am I learning something from them? Am I taking mm. something away from them? Am I yeah. going home and working on that same thing I've learned? And it's not that I've just learned it and leave it. Am I going home and just still trying to learn that one move I didn't, I couldn't get in class? Yeah, like what's oh, what's we, the takeaway, basically? Yeah, in my case, is every is every class I, I <laughs> I'm taking one move away. What did she do? Or what did he do? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm a I'm a I'm massive like classes I take I <laughs> free promotion uh, classes I take like people like Kenrick people yeah. like Kenrick Sandy people like you know. Bird Gang, Glenn Oxen, like it's the way they move. Mm. It's the way they make you think when you move. Because oh, to, oh, I forgot about Tobias. Tobias Eliama, like is it the way they move? They make you think about like why am I moving there? Where is my weight change? What is going on at that point? Mm. Am I just throwing my arms around because I'm throwing around? Why is it going from there to there? And then another question they give you is, like, for example, I went to a Tobias intensive and what he was talking about is he, he doesn't like, like he said personally, that he doesn't like it when dancers just, you know, stop and then walk to the next space, you know, in a routine. Like, oh, I'm going to stop. I'm going to move to the left now. I'm going to walk to the left because that's where I'm going to start dancing next. Like the right. transition. He doesn't want he doesn't want the stop and start transition. Yeah. He wants, like, he was talking about how we could dance into a transition. Mm. Or how we can dance and still keep, uh, or how we can, you know, transition with dance. And learning that has made me understand, like, sometimes you're, Sometimes you might you could micromanage your move, and sometimes you have to make it bigger. And I know this is a this is a you know this is something you should learn you know uh, first in dance how to micromanage movements or you know expand your movements. Mm. It's something you're meant to learn. But there's certain ways he, he, he showed that that you're like I've never tried that before. I've never done that. And for example, there was another one with Kenrick like when Kenrick was teaching where he just literally drew a board and just put A, B, C, and D. And then just put it, what he did was he just created a whole routine on a piece of paper and gave it to us. And this was a class. This was a class. He created a piece of routine on the mm -hmm. paper, gave it to us and go figure it out. Wow. It, that challenged me. Mm. I'm literally reading a choreography. I'm, it's, I'm creating a choreography from a piece of paper. Yeah. That's something I haven't done before. Mm. So this is, I'm just saying this to see how <clears throat> certain people impact mm. the way I train, the way I learn how to train or how to dance. Mm. Like, for and, example, I struggle with choreography and yeah. Henrik was like, if you can get you know, a choreography from a piece of paper, you will be able to know where your weight change is, where everything is. Mm. And I just find it fascinating how nowadays people would rather not go to that, but go to someone else's class just because it will give them marketing. Because you are the marketing. You as a dancer, you are the product. Yeah. You are what you're selling. So if you haven't gotten to that point, you're going to be just a backup dancer. The yeah. goal is an artist. The goal is for us to be seen as an artist. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, you want to say no. something? And I no, 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 no. I like, yeah, t totally, totally agree. And I think you're highlighting this, those kind of, yeah, those extra things that you get from class that we don't talk about that are yeah. like chore choreography because nobody really teaches you how to choreograph 
and it's Absolutely. difficult to learn choreography. So if someone can come and be like, today we're going to choreograph from a piece of paper, like, and you're like, okay, that's, that's a method, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it might not be like your method, but finding out new methods of choreography, as well as another thing you kind of touched on teaching like improvisation and teaching mm -hmm. how to perform, you know, and mm. teaching you how to not just walk from one place to another, but how to dance from one spot from well, one start. section to the other section. Absolutely. Is, you know, what you have to learn as a professional dancer, just how to just create filler. <laughs> like, <laughs> so those, you know, those the moments in the show inevitably when you like do something and you look over and you're like, oh my gosh, I finished early. <laughs> or like, I like, or everybody else isn't caught up or, you know, you have, you have like a little bit of filler time and you're like, I'm gonna repeat that section. Or it looks like I'm improvising. <laughs> like that's so important to do that <laughs> convincingly on stage, <laughs> um, without with you know because it, otherwise you would do just what he said, which is like I'm just gonna stop and wait. Like, can you imagine yeah. doing that on stage, stopping and waiting, and then being like, and next section, like, <laughs> but like teaching. The the seven and the eight. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, well, <laughs> and, like, and like teaching these more intangible aspects of dance, of how to perform, how to be present, how to uh, choreograph and move around others are are so important. And there are things that you only really learn well by learning dance, like in context. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I think we're basically like marketing teaching. We're like, <laughs> go to class, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's no, the message. I mean, go to class. <laughs> I'm I'm saying that. I'm not just saying that as as in go to class. I, yeah. My my point there is for people to understand why they are dancing. Why you go to class? Yeah. Yeah. Why you're dancing? Why you go to class? Why you improvise? Why you do? whatever you do in your artistry, right? Mm. Why are you doing it? Do you want to get, if you want to get better, be in a space of people that you know can make you better. And you're not yeah. just there because you are good. Mm. You want to be better. Because I, my, my, you know, in the industry, I look, I look up to people like, you know, people I've mentioned, I look up to I look up to those guys because the way they move is just different. And I'm a I came from a I, I've always come from a hip hop background because hip hop was the first thing I saw uh, that was the first reason that you know made me want to dance. But watching these guys move also opened my has broadened my horizon to the fact that I can be versatile. Mm. Like we we met we both met at a contemporary you know performance yeah like, and i'm still i still have that hip hop essence no matter what i do it's still there but at the same time they've made me understand these guys have made me understand that it's the way you move can actually impact the way you see other dances or other dance styles yeah like how you interpret you, them yeah. I interpret them because if you feel like, oh, I'm just a hip hop dancer, mm. and you haven't allowed yourself to like just understand why you're moving, if someone brings contemporary to your, you know, to to like to you, you you say, what the hell is this? Because you don't understand mm. it. You haven't allowed yourself to like just go, okay, this is the weight chain. This is what's going on there. Okay, how about I try it? How about okay, they're turning out great. Mm. How about I learn to do that? I'm not saying you're going to be hundred percent, but you will have an ideology. There's this dancer. I'm a I'm a huge fan of this dancer. His name is um, Ajani. I think Jordan Jordan Ajani. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The way he moves is just crazy. Cause this, he, uh, I I I just can't explain how the, his ideology on dance is just what I love to see. Mm -hmm in dancers because he makes it whatever he wants to make like you know 
he's dancing with certain moves. Like even if he wears like a full body mask and dance, you would know it's him because the way he's understood right. his own body is just different. Mm. It's just exactly what I am aspiring to learn. How yeah. to understand my own body where no matter what move it is, I understand that I'm the one moving. No yeah. one is creating on my body. I'm the one creating that story. Mm. Like, for example, what I mean by that is sometimes you will see him do other people's movement or other people's choreography, but it feels like he created the choreography. Yeah. Because he has understood what his body can do and he understands the, the, what the person or what the choreographer is asking him to do. Mm. And how to, like, make it his own as well and interpret it, Absolutely. as you say, through the lens of his own movement and his own, like, performativity and how to take ownership of that material. Absolutely. And it highlights for me this thing of also, one of the hardest things is just learning your first dance style. Um, mm -hmm. that how the way in which dance starts to create kind of like you're saying frameworks of perception or, or a framework for learning <clears throat> other styles um, you know so like once you learn like a you know once you learn like a pot of beret and like hip hop mm. then you see it in house then you see it in ballet then you see it in all these other uh, these other dances and you you like recognize it your brain goes like oh, I at least have like a, a launching off point for what that is. And now I'm oh, like wow. adjusting, maybe I'm like adjusting the style, the emphasis, the weighting, you know, or just learning how to learn. Like, you know, like I think, so for me, like I started with a lot of street dances mm. and because of that, the foundation in street dances is groove, is your groove. Yep. It's the way which biomechanically it's basically for the most part the way your hips are moving you know i say where your hips are you are and so yeah. it's other things might be making that happen so it, the, the action might like physically actually be coming from your knees you know or from the ankles or from some other place from the shoulders it might be starting but it's i kind of think of it as like kind of the movement of the hips but I always find for me groove is the first point and if you get the groove of a dance mm -hmm. then you get the weight placement if you get the weight placement you get the footwork absolutely and so for me that at once I learned how to learn dance that way then even when I approached other things other dance styles you know things like salsa things like you know kazumba contemporary even ballet even in all these cases, I was going, what's the groove? Because I go, because I'm thinking, as soon as I can figure out what my, the groove is, where my hips are, then I'm going to know my weight placement. Then I'm going to know the feel of this dance. And then the mm. steps, I just trust will come. Because until you get that groove, the steps will always just, just feel awkward because you don't yeah. have the feeling of the dance yet. But, I, but it's that learning how to learn, you know? Like I'm learning my first, second language. I'm learning French and, you know, uh, talking to like other, talking to polyglots, how like the hardest thing is learning your first, second language because, <laughs> because you're learning just how to learn. Um, but actually that in itself is, is a really beautiful process and it's just falling in love with the dance and being kind of patient with it. Mm. um yeah we don't have like loads of time left but one of the things i really wanted to touch on is like you do so much like cool cool work man like i always <laughs> think you do just like such interesting like oh, thank you. some really thank you. <laughs> like very high profile stuff but also just like you just tell me the stuff you do. I'm like, oh, that's dope. Like, <laughs> um, you know, and I, I always get excited about the stuff that you get up to. And I'm always like, how did you find that? You know, and how did they find you? Like, um, and uh, yeah, I just think you always do really cool things, you know, from stuff Thank you've you. done at like, you know, the Royal Opera House to, um, uh, which is like what you were doing when we met. And, yeah. and then like, you know, you've been on like, 
tour with like big artists. Uh, uh, what was the grime artist you you went on tour with? Um, uh, um, oh God! Sorry, I put so you there was the two of them. There's I did work with. Uh, this was back in the day. I think 2012. That I did work with Tinchi, and there's this guy. Um, the dual, the dual guy, the two guys. Uh, what's their name? Captain Conan. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah, and you know, and recently you you did um, this, like, you were part of this uh, performance art piece uh, with um, Philip Markiewicz, yeah. um, who's yeah. a, a Polish uh, Flemish artist, um, and uh, you know, that's an, another thing that's totally at like the <laughs> other end. Uh, you've been doing TV stuff recently as well like yeah. what's your what's your strategy man like how do you how do you find this kind of work do you have <laughs> advice for finding these kind of works what how to refine your search as an answer open it up how to like audition um, for these kind of things what i do what i personally do is uh luckily i i have an agent now but before i had an agent i used to go on like mandy yeah. i used to go on mandy dancers and just apply for a lot of things and then I realized, okay, I can't just keep applying for a lot of things without knowing why I'm applying for these things. Mm. So, but right now in a pandemic, I am applying for everything now. So, <laughs> 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 but, but hear what I'm like, saying, but also don't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> 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 like, so before the pandemic i used to i used to like think what is what would benefit me at that yeah. time what is worth it so for example there was a time where this is not a brag by the way there was <laughs> there was a time where there, there was a i was meant to do a video like a music video for this artist mm -hmm. And there was another time, it, the same time I was meant to do this, you know, this piece for a friend. Yeah. Like, because I knew this friend, like the idea of his piece is worth more than the money I'm going to gain from this music video. Yeah. So I decided to do the piece for my friend for free mm. rather than doing the, I'm, I'm not promoting you should do any stuff for free, by the way. I am yeah. not promoting that. I was just saying the idea, because the idea of this piece stemmed around things I could understand, I could relate to. Yeah. And that brought out the that brought out one of the best performances for me as a dancer. Really? Because I could relate to it. Mm. Fast forward to four that's, months. That's later, having like things in your career that you're just you're proud of just as an artist, as a dancer, you know. There is the stuff yeah, you do yeah. that, you know, it's not the dream job. You know, but yep. you're you're like I'm dancing, and that's that's fine. But I, it's also great when you can have those moments in your career where not only do you enjoy the dancing, but you like believe in what you're making. I think is yep great. Fast forward four months later, the the same video which I did, I sent it as like a as a CV to uh to the to the Royal Opera House. Mm -hmm. I sent that video as a CD to the Royal House, and uh, there was a lady there, her name is Naomi Lewis. Uh, she's the one that, you know, gets people, you know, she's like, I, I don't know what she's called. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember her job title. Yeah, casting, Let's just say, right. she's, Yeah, she's the one that does the casting for, yeah. you know, the Royal House. So I sent that video, the video of my friend, which I did for free, mm -hmm. as a CV to, you know, the Royal House. And, before was, you was there it, a, was there a call out for that or did you just were you just like there was a call out you there okay was. there was yeah there was there was, like, a, there was a Mandy, there was a Mandy advert for that okay and I sent the video through and mm -hmm. she sent me a message back saying that video well like was sick or oh, yeah. she didn't say it was sick in her way she said it was amazing um yeah. and she was like I should come in for an audition and this time I don't, I didn't have an agent. I didn't have anyone. I just applied through Mandy mm. with a video. Then we got there, we auditioned and that was the first ever piece I did with the Royal Prowse, which was House of the Dead. Mm. 
And after I did I saw the dead, the director or the, the choreographer, Claude from Us of the Dead, he just kept me, he kept me on his books. So yeah. when they were doing the, the tour for Us of the Dead, he called me along, he brought me along to do the tour. Bearing in mind, operas, like if they go to another country, they find new dancers. They do mm. not stick with the same dancers or some, the ones I know, they just find a new dancer or find a, a new actor. But yeah. he called me to go along with him Wow. And which I did for a year. I got, but I got injured in Lyon uh, when we're doing As of the Dead, 2019. I got injured where I had to have surgery on my knee. Wow. Fast forward to this year. He was doing a job in Germany. And who was the first person he called? He gave me a call and go, are you still dancing? Despite the fact that he knew I was injured for a whole year. Wow. He called me to ask, are you still dancing? And I said, yes. Mm. And from there, it was like, come on, you're coming to Germany with me. Mm. I'm doing a piece and I want you to be the dancer on this Dude. piece. And all so, of that starts with you going, I'm going to do my friend's piece, which actually comes down to just like being the best dancer you can be and like absolutely. knowing what, what dancing, what projects are going to represent you well as a dancer absolutely you know? and what are the projects that are going to get you more work of the same kind you know because it is one of those things where you do build up kind of rapport and work begets yep. work and if people see you doing a certain style they're going to ask you to keep doing that style um, absolutely. so if you can be working in the style that you want and be putting your best foot forward then you know more opportunities you know as well as it's the importance of networking and the the hardest thing you know for young dancers is just finding that breakthrough building those relationships you know yeah. where you can have a relationship with a choreographer where you can just be a reliable great dancer that they know that they can you know call up and say hey do you, there you go. do this it's it's basically all about choices like yeah what choices are you are you making like if you're starting, because back then I was starting out when this, I was, I was still new. I was still new to the business. I was still, I was getting like little gigs at that time. Yeah. But it's just, what choices are you making? Are you, do you want to do this? Like, do you want to just be a backup dancer? Do you just want to be known as a backup dancer? Or do you want to be known as an artist? Yeah. You can do both. I've seen people that do both. But at the same time, you have to you have to let people know I'm an artist first before they see you. Oh, she's danced with Beyonce. She's danced with this. She's danced with that. That's yeah. amazing. But then after that, what are you? What have you been doing? Mm. And to be frank, people that do the people that do dance with artists, most of them are artists themselves. Yeah. But because they pose themselves dancing for someone else, they don't get the respect they deserve. Hmm. yeah not, not that there's anything wrong with that it's just it's more like just how wrong. you how you present yourself and how you frame yourself i'm a backup dancer myself so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but one thing i like to like if i do it if I, if I do a job for someone like this week the next the next week or the, this is my ideology if i do like a if i do like a gig this week which I'm, you know, dancing in a in a music video or movie. The next job I want to get is something where I'm performing on the stage and I'm either the lead or you know mm. I was on that stage. Yeah. Because then if you send your CV out to people, they can see the difference. They can see what you've done. They can yeah. see that, okay, you've worked for people, you can learn choreography, but you can mm. also stand on your own where we need you to. Mm. So it's about like finding a balance, right? Finding a balance Fine. of the Thank stuff you. that Thank is you. like, <laughs> you know, that this, the, your bread and butter stuff that you're like, this pays the bills and the, mm -hmm. the, 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 you know, and keeps me in the dance world and the things that are, you know, this is what I want to be doing as an artist. This is like kind of maybe a bit more artistically fulfilling. Um, and it's kind of finding like a balance of, of, of the two of those. So that those can like coexist in your career, you know? Absolutely. And also one thing I, I wanna, going back to the mental illness question, 
one thing I want to, you know, say is we dancers have to start normalizing not being okay. Yeah. I don't know if this makes sense. Like, it's, I know a lot of people have set this out, like it's okay not to be okay. Yeah, but it's okay not to be, it's okay not to be happy where you are in your artistry. Yeah. And it's okay for you to question what you're doing. Mm. It's okay for you to, you know, because people people like ask questions like, oh my God, it looks like you get jobs every time. No, Instagram makes you think I get job every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been times where I've had a, a spell of not having anything. Mm. But the question is, how are you filling that gap? Yeah. What are you doing to fill that gap? Are you just waiting for the job or are you doing something to distract yourself? Mm. I'll figure out when I wait for the job, I get desperate. Right. And the directors, the choreographers, or the casting, whatever, they can smell it from afar. Right. And if they can smell that desperation on you, you're not getting hired. Mm. So the it's for you that your job is when you are having that spell where there's nothing in there, fill it in with something else. Get a part-time job. Get, get a project on. Mm. Start a project of your own. Do a podcast. Yeah. Do a blog. Do something. Fill that space. Don't let yourself slump into depression because as soon as you do that, that's one of the hardest things to get out of. Mm. And then like Find in the way. audition room, like your, your confidence is shot. And like you say, you're just too desperate. Absolutely. You want it too much. And often when you like, when you want a job too much, then you're just like, it's good to want jobs for the right reasons, but also yep. that's different from going, Oh, I need this job, I which this is job. then like, it brings some performance anxiety, which is like so much not, pressure, not, pr not productive. Yeah. That pressure that's not really helpful doesn't yep. allow you to just be in your own skin and just present yourself and yeah I, th I think you bring up a great point of just like take the pressure off yourself you know yep. and what kind of what we talked about of just like if it's not happening just make it happen so that you're make not relying on Absolutely. others for your like own self-efficacy basically you know you're not you're not waiting for an, a choreographer to validate you or to give you work you're like you make it happen so you can feel Absolutely. good about the work you're doing and, you know, put your best foot forward. And then, you know, when things pick up again, they pick up. Absolutely. And I just want to give a message out to every dancer right now, like going during this coronavirus, you know, during this pandemic, rather. We are, don't let anyone change what your artistry is. Don't let anyone or don't let what's going on now make you feel like you're not enough. Because trust me, this will pass. We'll be back to doing what we do. Just find something to distract yourself. Find something to make yourself happy. Yeah. Find happiness in something so you don't start doubting your artistry. Do not mm. doubt your artistry. We're all going through this together, but do not doubt. Do not let any... I know uh, Rishi Sunak has made us feel, or, you know, the government has made us feel like we are pointless to the society, but we are not. Mm. People are still watching Netflix. People are still on our Instagram liking our, you know, our artistry, liking, loving it, giving comments out. Mm. They still watch. They still, they are still entertained by artistry. So this is another reason you don't stop. Yeah. Not the main reason. It's not even 10% of the reason why you don't start. You don't start because your artistry matters and because your story resonates with a lot of people. That's why you're an artist in the first place. Mm. So do not let this time shake in or make you change what you are. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. Thank, 
thank you. <laughs> I feel like I need to hear that too. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, me too. I'm, I'm just here, up. just like, yes, yes, amen, <laughs> yes, and amen. Um, I wake up every morning and say this to myself, like, you are not this. <laughs> straight, straight, in, straight into the mirror. You can do it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm aware that like we need to wrap up and stuff. Like, uh, you need to head <laughs> off, but but let's um uh uh before we go um yeah first like just thank you for like an amazing conversation. This was no, like, thank you so, for dude. Me. This was so great. This was so good. Thank you great. for um, having me. And I've had an absolute <laughs> blast, and I'm always amazed at like the stuff we get into on the podcast and. Um, uh, and the thing that always su has surprised me the most is how much I've learned about myself. Um, mm. and actually it's been kind of a sort of, a, you know, a bit of therapy in a way, like, but I have, uh, <laughs> you know, it you know, is. when you do, you know, when you do therapy and in, in front, in front of strangers, <laughs> that's basically what <laughs> podcasting is. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Uh, yeah, yeah. When you're like, I'm not paying for therapy anymore. When I can just <laughs> go and do it in front of, in front of my peers. <laughs> when I can. What work. I found out, one thing I found out is conversations. Having conversations with, you know, with your friends, or having yeah. conversation with someone that is like-minded mm. as you are, it's a it's a beautiful therapy, a yeah. beautiful from a free therapy you ever get because you are just because they understand where you're coming from and you understand where they're coming from so it makes it easy for them to give you their you know thoughts on it to advise you on certain things and for you to be able to talk back to them and you know understand what the advice is mm. rather than you know them just telling you what they're thinking and you're just going <laughs> yeah yeah sure <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 it's a yeah it's an edifying process of like yeah it's building building each other up which is exactly what we need in this time <laughs> where, where can people follow you and find out what you're up to where's the best place is it instagram um it is instagram uh, uh -huh. yeah jeremiah dot olusola j-e-r-e-m-i-a-h Full stop. O L U S O L A. Uh, just, <laughs> well done. Yeah, just, just name. <laughs> That's okay. We'll put it. We'll put it in the link below so um, you guys can click on it. Uh, Sorry. And I think you're you're doing teaching stuff as well now. Yes. Um, I te I teach at Studio Sixty Eight, but I would not be teaching until probably maybe February or March. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever I I feel like for now, whenever the lockdown, you know. It's over. That's when I'm gonna start teaching again because mm -hmm. uh, the studio apparently the studio is studios can be open now. Really? I yeah. People finding loopholes out you know to open studios now, but I just feel like I right now I just wanna I wanna you know just see when you know it's right to come yeah. out because yeah. we're the ones suffering in this pandemic. We self-employed are the ones suffering in this pandemic and. So I just want to, you know, be the be, be solution. With it. Yeah. 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 That's fair, yeah. man. Well, um, yeah, we'll put a link in the description. Uh, give Jeremiah a follow. Um, and then you can find out more. He'll post about his classes and all the cool stuff that he's up to. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Which would be nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just sipping pina coladas on a beach somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, audience. Uh, thank you, dancers, for tuning in again and uh, listening. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you. Thank you for having me.